Welcome to Life, Lessons, and Laughter with your host, Glenn Ambrose. Hello, everybody. So, welcome. Welcome to Live Life Lessons and Laughter with yours truly, Glenn Ambrose, the, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. So, yeah, waiting for you guys to join in, post some comments, say hello. Today, um, as you can see, we're doing things a little bit differently. We started a couple weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to be discussing a particular topic and releasing it as a podcast. So we're doing my podcast live now, and for those watching on video, you can see Faith in the background getting her bed ready. <laughs> so she can lay down and, and chill with us while I'm doing this. So um, there she goes. I'll settle then. Um, so, yeah, today I got, you know, I'm going to dive right into it. Hey, Nika. You got a little, I can't see your picture for some reason, but I can see the comment. Oh, I see the picture when I pop on it. Hi, Nika. Thanks for joining. Um, so today what we're talking about is a, kind of a big topic. <laughs> um, like what's the point of spiritual work? Like, why do we do it? Why, why, you know, what's the point of it all? <laughs> um, you know, I think a lot of us do, we do a lot of work man. me included. We've done a lot of work. We've done a lot of diving into issues We've done a lot of releasing things that no longer serve us. We're doing a lot of, um, you know, childhood trauma work, shadow work, you name it, man. We're doing a bunch of work. <laughs> and hi, Kelly. Faith. Faith looks like she's living the dream. Yeah, she definitely is. Although we're out on a walk for the beach on the beach a little while ago. And she stirred up a hornet's nest or a wasp nest in the ground, which was not pretty. <laughs> that scared the crap out of her, but she's fine. Uh, dogs are resilient. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, we do all this work and this work and this work. And, and you know, there's, there's definitely, there's a dichotomy. There's, there's two sides to everything. There's a yin and there's a yang in this world. And um, so... Of course, the, the the part of the part of spiritual work that doesn't get enough attention, I believe, um, although it's trying to in the mass teachings right now, but I think it's being misunderstood to some degree because if you if you pay attention to what everybody's teaching right now, um, spiritual teachings really are evolving. So, you know, they're just evolving, which is a good thing. So like now everybody's teaching, not that they weren't before, but everybody's teaching mindfulness, uh, presence, consciousness, being in the now, like all that stuff, you know, it's, and it's all the same thing. And generally, I think what we tend to do is we make, we take everything spiritual and bring it into our linear world our linear thinking and make work out of it like you can't really work at being mindful or conscious you either are or you're not <laughs> like you know you can't really work at it um and you know i think we have to understand that because if you're just if you if you just you're just being you're just being that's enough 
Like, and we have to incorporate that. You know, if some stuff's bubbling up, then release it. If um, you're struggling, you know, with something, dive into it. You know, it's not that we, there are no other things to do out there. There's plenty of things that we can do and, and take action when necessary. But we also have to be spiritual. We have to live spiritually. You know, so this it kind of combines in with, you know, the question that I asked was, what's the point of spiritual work? Like, why are we doing it? So not only why are we doing it in the long run, what are we trying to achieve? What's the point of it? But also that kind of bleeds into half of the, the spiritual work <laughs> that I don't like to call it work that I think we're overlooking. So, so, you know, we have to do all the other stuff, but just being isn't really technically spiritual work, but the more often we can do it, the more moments we can string together, just being, then we're going to end up in a happy stretch of being. And, and it's more than just a happy stretch. It's a contented stretch. It's a deep spiritual stretch. It's a stretch where we are capable of taking divine action when necessary. Divine action comes out of being out of the presence. I, you know, <laughs> I was just thinking that like, uh, like an hour ago, I was thinking about, I was looking at faith, making sure that she didn't have any um, spots that were bothering her from getting stung by the wasps. And um, I was thinking like, I had a flash to when it happened. I was there on a beach talking with a friend of mine. Faith was over a little ways, about 10 feet away, just nosing around. And then all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see her jump straight up in the air and whimper. And my attention goes, and I was present. And the first thing was happening. I see the wasps and what to do. And it just all happened very, very quickly. And I just took off running away from faith, calling her because I was like, I instantly knew the best thing to do was to get her out of that situation. And there was no thinking involved It happened way too quickly. I just found myself running in the opposite direction, calling her. And of course she can't ran, you know, I'm, I'm yelling and running in the, yelling her name and running in the opposite direction. So of course she just instinct just kicks in and she runs with me. I mean, she, if I didn't probably didn't even have to yell her name, if I took off running in the opposite direction, she's going to run with me. So it was just a perfect action, you know, not only calling her name, but also running away from the situation instead of into it. You know, and so when I was thinking of that, I was like, wow, that that was inspired action. I didn't, you know, because I didn't think like, oh, if I run into the problem, uh, like and try to save her, it's going to make it worse. I just need to get her away from there. Like, I, I didn't think of any of that stuff. You know, it just I just found myself running away. So this is the this is a part of living mindfully and spiritually and connected that I don't think we give enough credit for. I've said this many years ago. I, I kind of was saying it for a while, and I haven't said it much lately, that I have never made a mistake when I was connected spiritually. Never. I've never made a mistake. I've handled every situation in the best possible way. Now, I've made many mistakes when I wasn't connected, you know, uh, but my best parenting moments were when I centered myself and then all of a sudden amazing ideas came through me. And, you know, when I was centered and just acted in an appropriate way, it's because we're connected to divine wisdom when we're there and inspired action just flows through us. We just find ourselves doing it. And it's perfect for the situation every time. I've, I've been in situations where I've handled the situation usually in a different way and satisfactorily, I'll add. <laughs> um, there, there wasn't any problem how I normally handled the situation. It usually worked out fine. 
And then a situation arose that was very similar, and also, but I was centered and I handled it completely different. Like basically the opposite of how I normally would have handled it. And it worked out perfectly that time. And I was like, that's so weird. Like, this is so weird that like, uh, like, why did I handle that differently than my past would have told me to, than my brain would have told me to? First, why did I handle it differently? Because it doesn't make any sense. And it's like, oh, okay, there was no thought. It I was divinely guided. Okay, cool. I understand why it happened. But isn't that interesting that it was the opposite and yet, for some reason, in a situation that looks similar to all these others where that particular action worked, the opposite action worked well, if I would have taken that same action in this situation, it wouldn't have worked well for some strange reason. But my new action did work well. So, you know, this is that it's it's amazing how when we're centered right action. And the other thing that comes a lot is um, non-action. <laughs> non-action and non-speaking is not my strong point. I talk and I have a hard time shutting my mouth. I have a hard time not sharing my opinion, except when I'm centered. It's completely natural then. And there's many times where I, I just notice myself not speaking and at first i'm like well i could i almost feel like i'm supposed to and you know for many reasons and but then it feels like i shouldn't so i don't and then i sit back and as i act as the observer i see how my interjections that i probably would have added really wouldn't have benefited the conversation at all they didn't need to be said and it worked out better, you know, because I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> so, you know, so it's inspired action and inspired non-action. You know, it, it goes both ways. So I'm going to check some comments here and Sarah's back. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining. And Kelly, Kelly's got a comment. Uh, such a cool platform to arrive at. I've been on the journey incorporating you in bed for four years. Wow. Yeah, we were, we've been doing it for like seven years. The whole journey, cake baking, decorating, etc., has blown me away. Now I trust only shit storms occur when I ignore my inner source. Yeah, they do. And then so so you can see that the the storms are you know, that this is kind of interesting too. I didn't know we we're going to talk about this, but, but you know, like we, I think we have to really start letting go of the idea of punishment. And I mean, I know I've used this terminology, you know, that the universe trying to teach us things and all this stuff. And it, all it is, is natural consequences. There's no punishment. They're not, the universe isn't tr like necessarily trying to teach us. It's a good way to phrase things a lot of times because our brain understands that our linear brain teaching, going to school, learning, um, coming out better in the end. All that type of stuff works well with our intellectual brain. So sometimes it's really good saying that. But as the spiritual teachings are evolving, we need to get out of the victim mentality more and more. So the universe doing something to us kind of like a punishment because we're doing something wrong or to make us learn something or that type of mentality. We need to start separating from that because it's all love. It's and it's all basically impersonal it's just law there's just natural consequences you know why do bad things happen on the planet well because human beings are closed off from source they're run by ego so they make bad choices and they do stupid things to feed their ego like it's it's just the universe isn't punishing them <laughs> it's just like there's a flow to life and when you go with it things go smoothly because there's a flow to life you know, it's like standing in a river, go trying to swim upstream or trying to hold the water back going. I don't understand. Like, you know, this river is mean because it's pushing against me. 
It's like, no, it's, it's not mean. It's not personal. It just flows that way. And if you stand up against something that flows that way and try to hold it back, it's not going to be pleasant. It's not because it does, dislikes you or it's trying to teach you something. It's just, you're going against the flow. It's just nature, you know, and this is how our lives are. So what made me think of that is, you know, when Kelly said it's um, storms occur when I ignore my inner source, right? <laughs> so when you're connected with your inner source, you're going with the flow and everything goes smoothly. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? Right. We're just going with nature. I mean, everything else that goes with nature. So here's a big picture thing. Human beings are the only thing that go against nature. We're the only things that we're, we're the only things on ever created that take what we don't need. You know, and, and just go against the laws of nature. You know, we destroy things and don't, you know, don't give back like to to the to the earth or to the energy to the universe whatever like it's we go against nature the way we're living and because when when we're going against nature there's just natural consequences you know so i want to touch on that let me see i gotta see some of this other stuff we got some good stuff coming in today spiritual conflict from nika uh, I feel like I never do enough in my area of service. Uh, yeah, that's this is such a common thing that we need to let go of. Uh, I've realized that this is my version of not good enough, <laughs> but I can't just let that go and work on myself, telling myself enough because I believe in service. So what if it's out of a place of insecurity? I want to get to a place where I do whatever service I can do and feel worthy regardless of accomplishment. How? Um, it's hell. This could be a, its own show, uh, but I'm going to try, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring out how this um, life lessons and laughter thing is going to flow. Um, so I'm going to dive into this a little bit. And then Ariana um, mentioned something about flow. So that might be perfect to bring me a little bit back onto topic. Um, so yes, it, you know, of course, most things spawn from the not good enough aspect. Um, you believe in service. Yes, but you have a, a delusional sense of what service is like, and most people do. It's because we've grown up in a world that that doesn't understand it and has has be, it, it was so fearful of an egoic. I'm better than the other person that self love has vanished. So self love and thinking you're better than other people are two completely different energies. It's two completely different things. So we can love ourselves. In fact, we need to love ourselves. It's because like, if we don't get this right, if we don't understand service properly, service to sum it up is giving from the overflow. You need, it's not a question. It's not it, it, it's not you should, it works better if. We're in a spiritual shift right now. Dysfunctional ways of being will no longer work. You cannot sustain living in dysfunctional ways. It, it, it's just not going to work. The, the, there's a spiritual shift going on in this world that is demanding that we, we live from a place of love. So living from a place of self-abuse, it no longer flies. This is why you are, you're struggling with it. And a lot of other people are struggling with it because we looked at our mothers and our grandmothers, you know, it, it does lean more towards mothers, but, but I mean, um, women, um, just because of society's, you know, uh, conditioning, but men too, we've been conditioned that like giving until your knuckles bleed, you know, like Mother Teresa is being a good person, which it's not. 
we cannot continue giving and depleting ourselves and expect to keep giving. There is only one way to continually give, and that is to fill yourself up and give from the overflow. You know, I learned that my first year of life coaching, there was, there was a few different things that I needed to fine tune so that I took care of myself first and gave from the overflow. And that's why, you know, eight years later, I can do that. I could do this forever. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not depleted at all. I don't get depleted. I get energized, you know, because I'm giving from the overflow in a healthy way. So therefore it's a completed cycle. I, I can, I, I fill myself up and I give and I fill myself up and I give and I fill myself up and I give and it, it, that it's a full circle. So it can go on forever and you can serve forever and you don't feel depleted. And when you just give, 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 and then you're functioning at 50%, you can only give 50% of yourself or 25% of yourself because you're depleted. And eventually you're going to deplete that last 25%. You'll get sick and you won't be able to go into work at all, you know, or diseases come in. We cannot abuse ourselves and deplete our energy and call it service. It's not service. That's self-abuse. <laughs> you know? So you need to get, it's like, this is why right now, one of the most popular terms is sustainability. Because as it is in the microcosm, it is in the macrocosm. People are looking at the earth going, the way we are living is unsustainable. We need to develop and incorporate sustainable ways of living. It sounds like that's part of your work and viral work. So you're, you're trying to create sustainable ways of living, but you're not doing it yourself. You need to do it in the microcosm. You need to create a sustainable way of giving service. You see, that's how you can continue giving. And that's not, that's not, but not only is it sustainable, but you're going to be way better at it, way better at it. So I, I, <laughs> I'm going to get back on this uh, on the topic here, I think. So Ariana, also when you when you go with the flow, your flow of life versus what others others other people's flows, I'm sure. I, I usually can read typo pretty good, so no worries. Uh, especially family members want to adhere to letting go of their expectations of you and living your own expectation opens up gratitude and abundant energy. Yes. Yeah. You, you have to go with your flow. You know, this is something that I teach all my clients that I work with. Uh, oftentimes um, I, I, I literally say, I tell people, I'm like, Hey, you know, I want, my goal is to help you on your path. That's my goal. I want you to find your path and guide you to your path and through your path. That's my goal. I don't want to teach you my path. I don't want to teach you what you should be doing based on what I know. Um, so, The reason I don't want to teach you my path is because it's not your path. You know, it's, it's just, so what's going to happen is inevitably you're going to wake up on my path <laughs> somewhere down the road and you're going to go, you know, Glenn kind of has some cool stuff and he teaches some spiritual ways and all this stuff, but this is all, I'm on his path. I need to find mine. And I never want that to happen to anyone. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a very rebellious dude, so I never want to do what anybody else is doing pretty much ever. So I don't want to uh, input that onto anybody else either. So, yeah, you, you know, letting go of other people's expectations, authenticity, living your own expectations opens up gratitude and abundant energy. It absolutely does. Authenticity. You're going to find a lot of these words in spiritual teachings more and more and more. You, and, and just in general, you're going to hear them more. Authenticity. Um, what was the other one I just said? Sustainability. Um, 
it's just we're, we're getting down to the grassroots of things, what works and what doesn't work. It's kind of it. This is what I love about spirituality. When you're, when, if you pay attention to like what I was talking about with Nika's question about, about service and uh, giving in an unsustainable way versus giving in a sustainable way, this isn't rocket science. I mean, I understand that our brains don't usually go here and this is, you know, like the way I'm phrasing it hopefully is different than what you said or, or what you've heard before. That's why it's helpful. I get that part. I'm not saying that anybody should have thought of this before. What I'm saying is when you really talk about deep spirituality and you really look at things under a spiritual microscope, what you see is the way we've been living literally doesn't work. It's unsustainable. It's highly ineffective and it breeds unhappiness and misery. And spiritual living is sustainable. It breeds love and it actually works. So it's not, you know, this is what I love about spirituality. It's, it, it's not trying to get you to go, Ooh, let go and let God, everything's wonderful. That's not what I teach. It's down to earth, really. It's just logic. This doesn't work. That works. It just doesn't, <laughs> you know? And, and I have yet to find somebody that can attempt to prove to me, unless they just feel like arguing and they're unconscious and that's their goal, which I'm not concerned. But anybody with an open, logical mind, you, you can't argue this stuff. It's, it, it's just fact, you know? That's what I love about it. So when, when it's, when people are exposed to it, it's like, oh yeah, why didn't I see that? You didn't see it because we were conditioned to live completely differently. You know, it's, it's like, it's like trying to figure out what an apple tastes like before you ever tasted one. You know, people can describe it, but, but until you take a bite, you're not going to know. So like, until you hear it a different way, your brain isn't, doesn't even know there's another way to view it, right? So it's completely natural, but it's completely logical and it actually works. So let's see what else we got. Um, Glenn, thanks. You really got my question. I didn't even mention the lesson I got from my grandma about life being about sacrifice. Right. Yeah. You didn't have to mention it, Nika. The reason you didn't have to mention the lesson you got from your grandma about life being about sacrifice is because everybody's grandmother gave us a lesson about that. <laughs> That's what we were taught. That's what was actually believed in these previous generations. But now during the spiritual shift, we're finding that those things are unsustainable. They don't actually work. And this is why we need to shift. So cool service give from the overflow absolutely and when there is a path laid out before you that is not your path absolutely nika so like um i i heard the same thing basically it said something like um you know it, it it's like it's like newly fallen snow the only path is behind you. <laughs> the only path you can see, you know, it, like you, that's why hindsight's 2020. You can look back and, you know, see all kinds of stuff. Um, but you, but looking forward, there isn't one because we haven't been there yet, you know? So if there's one, it ain't yours because <laughs> you haven't been there yet. How, how could you have made it? You know, um, let's see. Let's see what else we got. Kelly saying that her feed is full of positive vibes. Absolutely. Yeah, so is mine. Mine's been, <laughs> I get 90% positive stuff on everything I have for years. Um, ridding ourselves of conditioning we've all encountered is fundamental to finding our true self source. It's been painful, but the realization is magic. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, and it is painful. I mean, I've, I've experienced, ex I mean, really, really high levels of, of, um, pain. Like I've gone through spiritual knot holes 
that were extremely painful. Um, and, and sometimes it's, uh, I hate to say necessary. It's not necessary. If we'd learn, then it wouldn't be necessary, <laughs> but we don't learn, <laughs> you know, especially before that initial uh, spiritual awakening or initial series of spiritual awakenings. Um, that's when the suffering really has to, you know, usually it gets very bad until we wake up. You know, one of my favorite things to say is like, nobody has ever hired me as a life coach because they're bored on a Tuesday. It doesn't happen. And people, especially once they've heard my podcast and the way I speak, because I'm not BSing, like, like I'm not going to hold your hand and, and, and talk sweetly to you and, 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 you know, tell you it's not your fault. No, everything going on in your life is your fault. It's which, you know, people don't like to think of, but when you embrace it, you want it to be your fault because if it's not your fault, you can't fix anything. <laughs> it's out of your hands and you're just a victim floating through life forever with no control over your own peace, happiness, and love, which that sucks. I don't want that life. I want everything to be my fault. I want to be empowered. I want to be able to figure out life so I can do this. So to, to, in order to swallow that bitter pill, oftentimes pain pushes us to that point. And then once we open and we experience the magic that, um, uh, um, that Kelly had mentioned, the realization is magic, she said. Once we experience that magic, now all of a sudden, like when it first happened to me, like I woke up dramatically over three months, 17 years ago, and it was through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Th those steps are actually there to induce spiritual awakenings, which a lot of people don't know. But that's, that's what induced mine. And after I did the fifth step, I was like, pop, 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 pop. And I mean, everything started blowing open. And I went to my sponsor and I was like, when do we get to do the eighth and the ninth step? And he's like, that's like making amends and, and like saying you're sorry to people and stuff. Like nobody wants to do that. Like that's, that's fearful and, and difficult and people dread that. And I'm like, not me, man, let's do it. Because I, ha I blew open so much from the action that I took on my fourth and fifth steps that I was like, if the eighth and ninth are anything like the fourth and fifth, the, the, the magic that I felt after, I was like, bring it, bring the pain. And I went around kicking spiritual doors open for like five years after that. If I could find pain, I dove right into it because I loved the magic that was on the other side um, until I got really tired of kicking doors in. It's not the optimal way of living. I mean, I'm kind of an extremist, so I, so I did that. <laughs> oh, and I have to say hi to Sarah and Jennifer. I, I did see you guys. Um, I just got to try to keep the flow going when it's going. Um, so yeah, so that I keep the flow going when it's going. That's also how I knew to to get in on that question that was said and understand it. It's because this information isn't coming from me. There's a flow of information going through, and as long as I keep speaking and and, and rolling with it, it continues to flow. When I divert my attention, disconnect, read comments, it kind of disconnects a little bit, and I'm just getting better at being more fluid with it, being able to read and, and, and kind of stay on. So this is, it's kind of exciting because I'm, you know, I'm growing through this experience too. Um, so now this is a good example of how I disconnected. So I have no idea what I was just talking about, but what I am going to do is look at my little list of, of, of ideas. So the point of spiritual work is deep, gratitude and contentment versus fleeting highs. So what, you know, a lot of times we don't understand what, what, what spirituality is. We want to be, we think it's happy. <laughs> it's not. Um, 
It's not happy. It, it's something much more powerful than happiness. Happiness is basically the best way I've, my brain has been able to wrap around it. And I don't know if this is technically true or not, but my brain understands it is when there's a collective vibration basically called happiness or high. Um, this is like a collective vibration. You can tune into that. And when we align with that and tune into it, we're like, what? you know, something excites us and we connect to that vibration. And half of what we're experiencing isn't even us. It's just a collective, wow, you know, and it's, and it's amazing and it's, and it's fulfilling and it's wonderful. And, and, you know, th that's cool. And we can still have those in our life, depending on who you are. I don't go up there that much. Like, I just don't, I just never really have. I've, I'm just not the, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the hoo-ha person. I'm passionate in a lot of ways, but I'm not the hoo-ha guy. Like, um, it's, it just, it's just not who I am. And in fact, you know, I'm going through changes here and I just was buying a vehicle and my neighbor was asking me about it and about the process, what was going on with it. And I was explaining and she looked at me and she says, well, are you uh, like, are you still okay with this buying this vehicle? I said, yeah, I'm completely fine with it. And she's like, oh, because you don't, you know, with the things going on, you didn't really seem too excited about it. Um, and I was like, no, I was just explaining the things going on. I'm completely calm, like I'm completely complacent with my choice to purchase this vehicle. And uh, I had a friend visiting from the States with me at that moment. And she goes, yeah, he doesn't get excited about stuff. Like <laughs> I don't, I get, I get deeply content and happy and joyful and, and I like it, but I'm just not the external. Oh my God, this is awesome. I don't do that. You know? So we're all, we're all different, but that, but I still love adrenaline stuff. I can go skydiving and go like, Oh my God, this is amazing. That's the type of stuff. But look, look at my shirt. Empower adventures. This was from zip lining in, in Florida. Like, I love that stuff because I do love connecting to that high, happy energy and it's fun and we can, we still get to do that, but do not mistake that for spirituality. That's not what we're looking for. It's not even good enough. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't even hold the candle to spirituality. Spirituality is deep. It's deep. It's more body centered and it's very deep and very powerful. And it's more like contentment. It's like, you know, it, it's like sex. It's well, not technically sex. It's like making love to the person that you just feel so connected with. You know, it, like most of us have had that person that like you were just in love. The timing was right with the relationship. Like everything was flowing. It just, man, it was just right there. And you made just this beautiful love and you're laying there and it's all done. And there is nothing else you want in life, man. It's just, do you want water? Nope. Do you want a cigarette? <laughs> nope. Can I get you anything? Nope. Everything's just perfect. Deep solid contentment, immovable, just divine perfection. That's what spirituality is like. And it's even stronger than that. That's just kind of something, you know, a reference point, but it's just, it, it's that knowingness that everything's okay always. And that you are loved beyond measure and supported beyond your wildest dreams. And that's your baseline. And then all of a sudden this emotion like of sadness or fear might come in and you see it and you go, oh, okay, I'm experiencing some sadness now. All right. And you don't even resist it because it's not that bad. <laughs> it's just, it's just a passing emotion and it's part of life and you go through it. 
and you experience it fully and it goes. But you never lose that solid baseline of deep, solid contentment and love. That, my friends, is what spirituality is about. And that is way more powerful and better than anything that any roller coaster or any anything that can get you high, you know, and I'm not talking about drugs. It's better than those too. But um, let's see if there was anything else I want to touch on. Because I got to try to keep these to 45 minutes. You guys know that. You not you guys know that I'll be talking for two hours if I'm, if I don't watch myself. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna touch on two things quickly. How we do things adds up to happy years. I'm just gonna touch on this quickly because I kind of already touched on it when I was talking about like stringing together moments. And then what it looks like. So when you string together, but you know, we're like, oh, I'm going to be spiritual. Oh, I'm going to be spiritual. No, just be spiritual right now. And then see if you can be, hang on to it in the ongoing now, you know, just try to do that. And if you notice that you're disconnected, try to reconnect and just do that. And then what happens is you get, you, you're connected more and more and more. And you don't punish yourself if you find you're disconnected. You just go, okay, cool. I, I notice that I'm disconnected. That, that's excellent. That means it's an opportunity for me to reconnect again. Cool. So don't punish yourself for not being connected. Pat yourself on the back for recognizing that you're not connected so you can get back connected. You know, and if you do that, you string together a bunch of moments. And then that adds up to weeks and months and years. And then you look back and you're like, wow, I was happy most of last year. I was happy, you know, yeah, well, that's because you were in the present moment. You're not unhappy in the present moment. You can't be. There's nothing wrong in the present moment. So that I just want to touch on. Uh, this I want to touch on too, to transcend, not to keep working. This is the point of spiritual work. It's to transcend. It's not to work on every time Susie stole your pencil in third grade. You know, it's not to go through your entire childhood and then go through your early adulthood and then go through and looking for problems and like, you know, it's, I kind of got riled up about this a couple weeks ago. The spiritual shift is real. And there is, we, we just can't do things the way we are. We cannot dabble with spirituality anymore. It's time to transcend this stuff. Like I said, my whole, I've done it both ways. My entire world spun around on a dime in three months. And I was, for lack of a better term, highly awakened. Now, I settled back down and incorporated things in life and experienced all kinds of stuff that affected me in different ways and blah, 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 blah. But I haven't been floating around on a cloud for the last 17 years. I've d dove in and done some difficult work. I've gotten lost. I've gotten back on. I've, like, I, I've had the myriad of experiences. And so I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to anybody else. I'm not, I'm just letting you know, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it doesn't work anymore because I know it doesn't work with me. And I know it's not working with my clients. And I know it's not working with other spiritual people that I'm friends with. It's not working anymore. We need to redefine what we're expect, expecting from our spiritual work. And we need to expect to transcend our shit transcend it gone no longer have it no longer live with it no longer struggle with it we need to transcend our stuff that is the point of spiritual work it's always been the point but we got addicted to information and we brought spirituality into our human world and humanized it you know this is like what when they say um i've heard it said that you know, um, God made 
man in his image and people say, well, no, man made God in his image, right? This is the same mentality. We took spirituality and we brought it into our human world and we humanized it. We put a linear time on it. We, we called it work. We decided it was going to be, you know, oh, I'll be working on myself forever. Yeah, technically that's true, but it's not what you think it is. <laughs> of course, we'll always be evolving into better versions of ourselves, but that doesn't mean that we, you know, we do some work and then we get a little bit better and then we suffer and then like, you know, don't suffer for 20 years. You can awaken, you can transcend, you can put this stuff behind you very quickly, very quickly. And this is, you know, there's a lot of spiritual teachers and life coach. Well, I don't know if I'm a life coach anymore. <laughs> there's a lot because life coaches probably can't do it. They're going to coach you on their life. Um, so, you know, I consider myself more of a spiritual teacher. If I'm talking about people's life situations, I'm teaching them spiritual stuff, whether they know it or not. Like I'm using spiritual tools for them to transcend life situations. So to me, it's all the same. Um, that's why I use life coach because it's like, whatever you can call it, whatever you want. I know what I'm doing. I'm working with spiritual law underneath. We can transcend this stuff very quickly. You know, we can transcend stuff in a phone call. We can transcend stuff in a, 15 minute meditation. We can transcend stuff in uh, a, a week of intense, like, uh, like a hour, like an hour block, like three or four times in a week on one topic. We can transcend gigantic issues in a week. I mean, I've done it. It can be done. I've helped other people do it. And this is where we need to lean into. We need to launch we need to transcend and launch into this stuff. And, you know, I'm hoping that, that there's probably going to be egoic resistance to these statements because it's like, well, geez, you know, yeah, but my situation is really difficult. It's all the same. It's energy. And the dynamics of energy works the same. It doesn't matter if, what the topic is. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes there isn't bigger batches of energy and it might take a little longer. It, it might take four sessions instead of two sessions. You know, stuff like that can happen. But nothing, nothing you have, nothing you've experienced, nothing you carry should be holding you down for a year, not even a year, not even six months, nothing. There is nothing that we experience in this planet that could possibly drag you down for a year if you're doing the work properly. Let that sink in. So whatever it is, if you're not doing what you need to do to transcend it, not to live with it. We're not here to live with our pain, live with our misery. We are here to transcend our pain, transcend our misery. So if you're not doing what you need to do to transcend it, check yourself, man. Check yourself and dive in and do the deeper work. You will be so happy you did because you're going to get that stuff that Kelly talked about as magic. That's where the magic is when you transcend if you're just working on things and tweaking things day after day, week after week, year after year, all you're doing is, yeah, you're getting a little bit better. But what it is, is, is you're, you're actually satisfying the ego that you're working on yourself. Well, I am working on myself and it's a lifelong thing don't think like that. You're cutting yourself short. It doesn't have to. Yes. It's growth is a lifelong thing, but transcending your suffering is not, I guess that's what I, that, that was how I wanted to phrase it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sending that through. Transcending your issues is not a lifelong journey. Growth and expansion is, but that can be joyful. You can expand. D expanding is joyful. Transcending misery is not. It's a pain in the ass. It hurts. So let's get through it and get into the expansion. We need you guys. <laughs> we need you to do this. And you deserve it. You deserve some happiness. 
everybody on this path is very large hearted, open, loving people. That's why you're on this path. You deserve to have the love and the peace and the happiness flowing through you. You deserve it. And if you do choose to experience that for yourself and bring it into this world, then you're going to be birthing better energy into this world and speeding up the spiritual shift. So not only are you helping you, you know, we talked about service, <laughs> Nika, you want to serve? Be the change you wish to see. We need to be the change we wish to see. If we want to live in a utopian world, we have to start acting like it because it's really not that far off. It's not as far off as we think it is. So we, we the spiritual ones, have to start embodying a more utopian world so we can usher it in, so we can be the examples that other people are seeing going, oh my God, it is possible to transcend quickly. So-and-so did it. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to do it too. And they actually walk through life happy. They actually serve others and never deplete. I'm going to do that too. We need to be the examples. We need to be the change we wish to see, but we need to do it ourselves first. So, so there, that was it. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Sarah, Kelly, Jen, Nika, Ariana. And I love these new names. Reach out if you guys have any questions, if you're interested in any life coaching or whatever, or just to say hi. Um, because some of these names, I, I don't, they're not clicking in my brain, so they might be new. It's fun. And I love the, the um, existing people, of course, as well. So, all right, I got to fly. And uh, thank you, guys. And, um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. See you later. We'll talk soon. Stay tuned for the ending. It's got music and everything. Looking for more? Check out over 200 episodes of Life Lessons and Laughter, or click the link in the description of this episode to connect with Glenn directly.